Welcome to the Neuropathy Support Group and Podcast. I'm Chris, and I'm so glad you tuned in. It's my hope with this podcast to help all of us gather information that might help those that need support dealing with this debilitating issue. Before we get started, let's get the formalities out of the way with the medical and privacy disclaimer. I am not a doctor or medical professional. The information on this podcast is from personal experiences and is meant for group support. Additionally, the information discussed is not meant to diagnose, treat, or cure any underlying conditions associated with neuropathy. All names here within are private and will not be shared with any outside sources. Please consult your health care provider before making any health decisions. If you have medical concerns or an immediate emergency, please contact your doctor or dial 911. Well, hello everyone. Sorry I missed you last week. Now, that whole week was really bad. I was in a lot of pain. Really couldn't do anything. And you know how it is. You just don't have the energy to do things. And that was the problem here. That's why there wasn't any podcast last week. And I'm sorry about that. But I'm back again. And we are going to be talking about today 11 signs your antidepressant might not be right for you. For me, I take about seven different kinds of medications for anxiety, depression, and the whole range of everything that there is. So this is a good topic for me, and hopefully this is something that's going to help you out. For many people, finding the right depression treatment is a trial and error process. An antidepressant may work well for one person, but not at all for someone else. And experts don't yet have ways to predict this. In other cases, a person may start to feel better on an antidepressant, but the side effects are too bothersome for them to keep taking it. I know there was one medication I started taking right at the very beginning of all my depression was Lexapro, and that one really had some bad side effects for me um, personally, and so, you know, I had to stop that one and start taking something else, but, you know, it took a long time for me to get my regimen uh, correct, and, you know, I'm not 100%, but it does help. Our review assessed previous studies of 21 antidepressant medications and concluded that though these drugs are an effective treatment for depression, some work better than others and some are better tolerated by the body than others. One way to improve your chances of finding depression medication that works best for you is to look for the following signs that your antidepressant isn't working well enough or is no longer working the way it should. Number one, you feel better right away, but it doesn't last. Exactly how antidepressants work is still a mystery. The effects are thought to be related to changes in neurochemicals in the brain, such as serotonin and dopamine. Changes that usually take two to 12 weeks to set in with a peak at six to eight weeks. So if you feel differently immediately after starting a depression treatment, it could be a placebo effect, says this doctor, medical director of behavioral services. Sometimes that placebo effect wears off and the actual effect of antidepressants kicks in. Other times the placebo just wears off and the intended effects of the antidepressant are never felt. In this second case, it isn't that the medication stopped working, it's that the medication beyond the placebo effect just didn't work for you in the first place. Number two, you skipped a dose or several. It's a common situation. Busy people often miss doses or take their medication at irregular intervals. The trouble is, not taking the antidepressant medication consistently can prevent it from working as well as it should, or prevent it from working at all. 
This can cause people to abandon, abandon what otherwise might be a very effective treatment. For me, at least I don't have to worry about that because I take all my medications at night. Number three, you can't sleep well. Antidepressants can make you feel more sleepy and affect your libido and sex life. And that's what happened to me with the Lexapro, which can affect your sleep. Some people are also surprised to know that antidepressants can cause vivid dreams, sudden jerkings of limbs, especially at night and when tired. And that's what happens to me. I have restless sleep syndrome. This doctor, Dr. Lim, says the following tweaks to your bedtime routine can be enough to correct these some of these issues. Try relaxation techniques such as deep breathing. Exercise during the day rather than at night. Listen to calming sounds and music or watch some calming videos. And talk to your doctor about taking an over-the-counter sleep aid like melatonin. You may also want to consider additional tweaks including avoid caffeine for at least six hours before bedtime. Make your bedroom a screen-free zone, no TV, smartphone, tablet, or computer. Avoid any alcohol for at least four hours before bedtime. Go to bed at the same time each night and set an alarm to wake up at the same time each morning. And keep your bedroom dark and cool. Number four, your mood is still low after a few months. According to the Cleveland Clinic, you may not see the full benefits of an antidepressant for two to three months after you begin taking it. If that doesn't seem to be happening, discuss this with your health care provider who prescribed it, as you might need to try a different antidepressant or have a dosage changed. Number five, you feel more energetic but still feel blue. If you feel more physical energy, after starting an antidepressant, but you still have depression, that's good and bad news. It seems the depression medication is starting to work, but not in the right way. Increased physical energy combined with depression is a bad combination that can make you act out or increase your risk of suicide. Number eight, your antidepressant doesn't pack the same punch. If you've been on antidepressant for a long time, your body may develop a tolerance. As a result, a medication that once worked well, controlling your sadness, anxiety, and other symptoms no longer has that power. Sometimes, increasing the dose under supervision by your doctor may help. If you've been taking 10 milligrams of Prozac, for example, your physician may increase the dose to 20 milligrams. In other cases, trying a different medication or treatment is helpful. Number nine, your depression worsens. If your depression symptoms get worse as soon as you start taking an antidepressant or they get better and then suddenly get worse, it's a sign that the depression medication isn't working properly and you should go see your healthcare professional right away. Specific warning signs to watch for feeling ag agitated or restlessness, pacing or constant movement, hand wringing or feeling generally out of control. Number 10, your mood has improved, but you're still not yourself. If you experience some relief on an antidepressant, but it's not the relief you hope for, talk to your doctor about other treatments, or perhaps even combination of treatments. Options may include trying another antidepressant medication or the addition of counseling, psychotherapy, mood boosting, cardio exercise, or light therapy to treat the regimen. And each and research has shown that adding psychotherapy to medication treatment produced better outcomes for people and with depression than just medication alone. Number 11, your mood or energy improves, but too much. Depression medications are sometimes 
cause mood swings, especially in people who have a tendency toward bipolar disorder. Depression and mania. If you feel usually unusually elated, or you become very tense, terse, remember that word, with your spouse, feel noticeably more irritable, or have an un uncharacteristic bout of road rage, you probably need to change your antidepressant medication. And finally, the bottom line, while taking an antidepressant can be very helpful for managing depression, you might not find the right one for you on the first try. If your medication isn't meeting your expectations, don't give up. Consider talking to your doctor who specializes in treatment, treating mood disorders if you aren't already seeing one. And be on the lookout for and tell your doctor about any worrisome symptoms you experience while you're taking your antidepressants. Maniac episodes, serotonin syndrome, suicidal thoughts, and seizures, for example, need to be evaluated by Dr. ASAP. And that's it. You guys take care of yourselves. I'll be back next week with a new episode. Go outside, get some fresh air. Talk with some people, even maybe go to the park and just sit there. And that helps a lot. It helps me. Or just get up and read a book. But other, in otherwise, any symptoms you may have, get them looked at from your doctor. Because I'm not a doctor. And with that, I'll talk to you next week. Bye. As we come to a close, it's my hope this podcast and other sources, such as product reviews that I have discussed today, can better our lives and give us some relief dealing with neuropathy. This episode plus others are posted every Monday on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, iTunes, Spotify, and Stitcher. And finally, whatever life throws at you, even if it hurts you, just be strong and fight through it. Remember, strong walls shake, but never collapse. Talk to you next Monday.